Good morning. This is our second video lesson and it will focus on the rules pertaining to powers. So we have five main laws of exponents written. And you can see that it's important that we realize that these are powers of the same base. So the base here is x. So when we are multiplying powers of the same base, we simply add the exponents. When we are dividing powers of the same base, we subtract exponents. Now it's very important that n is subtracted from m. So we end up with m minus n. In rule three, we have an existing power and we raise it to a second exponent. In this case, it's the same as having the base raised to the overall exponent of m times n. So the exponents here multiply. Any base at all with an exponent of zero is equal to one. Finally, if you have a negative exponent, x to the negative m, this is the same as having one over x to the positive m. This is also true if the negative exponent is in the denominator, we can rewrite this x to the positive m. Okay, so we're gonna look at some examples now. And the instruction is simply, simplify and write with positive exponents only. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one here. We have y to the seven. The implied operation here is multiplication. So y to the seven is being multiplied by y squared. So this is just the first rule here. So we simply add the exponents together. In question two, the base is s. We are dividing, so we use the second rule. Here it's important to note that the implied exponent here is a one. So we do one minus four, which gives us an exponent of negative three. Finally, in order to comply with our instruction, we would rewrite this as one over s cubed. Okay, problem three is rule three. So we simply multiply three by seven to get 21. Now that same rule three will be uh, applied in the next few examples here. But in each case, it's really important to note that this number here is its own power. So it has an imp uh, implied exponent of one. So now we can use rule three. So the exponents will multiply like this. So we end up with three to the four multiplied by a to the eight. And three to the four is 81. If you ever have um, trouble evaluating these, you can use your calculator. So I'll just show you quickly on uh, this Casio calculator here. It's this button that you would use like this, three to the power of four equals, and you can see that it's 81. So this button right here, okay? All right. So uh, again, in question five, don't forget the implied exponent here. So this now becomes two cubed over x to the 12. And two cubed means two times two times two, and it's equal to eight. Number six, once again, there is an implied exponent of one here. So we end up with x to the negative eight over two to the negative four. So we simply multiply each exponent by negative four. Now we're gonna apply rule five, twice in fact. 
So we're going to change x to the negative 8 into 1 over x to the 8. And similarly, we have 2 to the negative 4 in the denominator. And that's the same as having 2 to the positive 4 in the numerator. So in the end, we'll have a numerator of 2 to the 4 and a denominator of x to the 8. And 2 to the 4 is 16. Okay, last one is um, just a distinction in notation here. And obviously we're focusing on rule four, but once again, we remember that this is six to the one multiplied by z to the zero. In other words, it is six multiplied by one. So we end up here with an answer of six. While in this case, these currently each have um, exponents of 1, so that they will then each have exponents of 0 once we apply rule 3. So this ends up being 6 to the 0 times z to the 0, or 1 times 1. Okay, so again... Um, just the different notation can yield a different result. Okay, let's continue with some additional examples. In this case, it's um, important to remember the difference between a negative exponent um, and just a negative coefficient. So the instruction said that we cannot have negative exponents. So this would be um, rewritten 1 over x to the 6. So we have this. Negative 5 is multiplied by 1 over x to the positive 6. And this is the same as writing it this way. Negative 5 over x to the power of 6. And that's perfect. Okay, so we can't do anything to change the negative coefficient. We can only um, rewrite the power such that the exponent is positive. Okay, number 10, 1 over t to the negative 5. This is direct application of rule 5. This is the same as t to the 5. Okay, this one uh, has a coefficient of negative 1 here. So it's the same as having this. So you have negative 1 multiplied by y cubed in there. Okay, and that negative 1 itself has its own exponent of 1. So the first thing we do is apply rule 3. So we're going to have negative 1 to the power of 5 multiplied by y to the power of 15. So this is negative 1 multiplied by itself five times, an odd number of times. So you end up with negative 1 or negative y to the 15. Okay, while in example 12, we have... an outer exponent instead of 6. So we end up with negative 1 to the power of 6, y to the 18. And now negative 1 multiplied by itself 6 times, an even number of times, yields a positive 1 result. So the answer is positive y to the 18. Okay, let's try this example. Put in that implied exponent and now multiply all exponents by negative 3. So we will have 3 to the negative 3, m to the positive 6, and n to the negative 12. Next, we have to rewrite this with only positive exponents. 
So these two quantities must go to the denominator. So we now have m to the 6 over 3 cubed times n to the 12, like this. I'm going to use a ruler, okay, like this. So these two quantities are now in the denominator with their positive exponents. And then lastly, 3 cubed is the number 27. So the final answer would look like this, with 27n to the 12 uh, in the denominator. Okay, let's take a look at number 14. Now remember that in the denominator, this is not overall equal to one. Rather, it's equal to four times one or four. So we might wanna start just by rewriting that denominator. It would look like this, four. Okay? The next thing we might like to do is make this exponent positive by bringing this power to the denominator. So now in the denominator, alongside the four, we would have three t to the positive one. So that means there's nothing left in the numerator except a factor of one. So this quantity came down and now in the denominator, we have four times three t. This is simply 12 t. So in the end, we end up with one over 12 t. Okay, 15. First, apply the third rule. So two to the negative three, b to the six, over y to the negative 15. Next, we have a couple of negative exponents. So this quantity has to come to the denominator while this one goes to the numerator. So up top, along with b to the six, will now be y to the 15. In the denominator will be two cubed. And for the final answer, we would change two cubed to eight, like this. 16 is similar. Okay, so first apply rule three, m to the negative nine, four to the negative three, n cubed. Now we take a look these powers have negative exponents, so this power goes to the denominator while this goes to the numerator. So in the numerator now will be four cubed, and in the denominator, along with n cubed that is already there, we will have m to the nine. And finally, we will change four cubed to 64. Okay, 17 and 18 are a little bit different now. I'm hoping that you'll notice we have powers of the same base here and here here and here. So what I would suggest then is that first we complete the division inside here, leaving this outer exponent alone. So let's start like that. We're gonna complete the division. So six divided by two is three x squared divided by x to the power of five must be accomplished with rule two. So we subtract exponents. So two subtract five is negative three. 
we do the same thing in working out the quotient here, y to the negative three divided by y to the four. That gives you y to the negative three minus four, which is negative seven. So now that the division is complete, I would then bring in the outer exponent. So that will give us three to the negative one x cubed y to the seven. So all exponents are multiplied by negative one. And lastly, we have um, an opportunity to write this with a positive exponent. So there are a couple ways to do that. You can just change it to one over three and then this would sit beside it like this, one third x cubed y to the seven, or um, that is exactly the same as writing x cubed y to the seven over three. Okay, so whatever you prefer there. If you're wondering, we're gonna do 20 examples in total, okay? So we're getting there. Let's try this one. So as with 17, we begin with the division. So I'm just gonna leave that outer exponent and we're gonna do the division first since we have these powers of the same base. So 15 divided by three is five. X cubed divided by X to the negative two. We subtract exponents. Well, it's negative three subtract a negative two. That's the same as negative three. Sorry, it's positive three. Positive three subtract a negative two. That's the same as three plus two, which is five. Okay, lastly, y to the five divided by y squared. Five subtract two is three. So this is what we get when we have completed the division. Okay, now rule three is applied. So we're gonna get five to the negative two, x to the negative 10, and y to the negative six. All quantities are now written with negative exponents. So to make those exponents positive, these quantities all go to the denominator. So that actually means that in the numerator, we will have only one left. So the denominator will now contain five squared, x to the 10, y to the six. And five squared is 25. All right, so again, first complete the division, then apply rule three, so multiplication of the exponents, then make the exponents positive. Okay, the last two examples are all powers of base 10. This of course is important because it's uh, involved in engineering notation. So these are all powers of base 10. So, I think what we'll do is perform the multiplication inside here first. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply 10 to the negative five by 10 to the positive four. And in multiplying, all we have to do is add exponents. So we add negative four, sorry, we add negative five and positive four and we get negative one. The same thing can be done in the denominator. To figure out the exponent that goes here, we add six with negative three. Okay, so we've now completed the multiplication. Next, we're gonna do the division. So once again, I'll leave that outer exponent. I have to divide, so this means subtracting exponents. Right? and it has to be m minus n. So in this case, it's negative one, subtract three. 
that's going to be negative four. Lastly, we can apply rule three, so these exponents multiply, and our final answer is 10 to the eight. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same process here for number 20, so what does that mean? It means first, we're gonna do the multiplication in the numerator, filling in the correct exponent here, and the multiplication in the denominator, filling in the correct exponent here. Now there is a little trick in that numerator in that we cannot forget that this is a one. So we add five plus one plus negative three, and that will give us three. And in the denominator, again, we are adding exponents since we are multiplying the, pro the powers. So we add negative eight and positive four, and we get negative four. Next, let's complete the inside of the bracket by performing this division. When performing the division, we subtract exponents. So three minus a negative four. That's the same as three plus four or seven. Next, multiply these exponents together to get negative 35. And lastly, remember the instruction, positive exponents only in our final answers. So this is rewritten one over 10 to the power of 35. Okay, um, I hope that uh, that lesson went smoothly for you. You have 20 good examples um, from which to base your studies. Uh, there are some suggested problems from your textbook listed for you in Blackboard. Thanks a lot and have a good day.